Hello everyone, VJ's a Freddy back again with some more What's On Deck. Actually, What's On Kickstarter to be exact for right now. I'll probably do this in two videos. It's been a while, it's been a minute, as people like to say, which is just a weird saying. Makes no sense. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I apologize, I didn't get to a video last week. I uh, didn't have the opportunity to do it. Didn't have the time to do it. Um, plus, I was also celebrating my birthday a little bit, I guess. And this week, I'm actually on holidays, so I got a little bit of time today to do it. Would have done it yesterday, like I usually do it on Sundays. However, we went out to the park with the whole family um, and had some, you know, some fun. It was, it was all right. It got dark and a little bit rainy later on. Fortunately, we all left before the rain came. Uh, also, this week I had this. I was uh, saddened to have to put my cat to sleep after about 15 years, or almost 15 years. So it's been a rough couple of days, a rough few days, the last four or five days. Um, but, anyways, let's get on with what's on deck. That's what's up with me. <laughs> um, Kickstarter wise, let's just run down everything because I don't remember where we left off. There's a lot of, yeah, oh my god. Yeah, the Mint 2 from 52 cards is just blowing up. Over 1500% funded, 7 days to go. They have added a supposedly limited edition deck, one per backer. Which is a foil variant. It's a bit pricey. We'll quickly glimpse a look at that. I am planning myself to not back too many projects on Kickstarter going forward. Just because oftentimes you end up dealing with people like <coughs> Natalia Silva. <laughs> who fail to deliver what you pledge for and launch more projects in some cases. And, um, <laughs> and then, of course, I mean, there's, there's always a risk. And nine times out of ten, the deck becomes available on Kickstarter afterwards. Or nine times out of ten, the deck becomes available outside Kickstarter anyway. Uh, sometimes a little more expensive. So, let's see, these are the second edition ones. Mint, Blueberry Mint, Frost Mint, and Cucumber Mint. And where is the, did they even have a picture of that one? Marking system upgrades. They also have mint merchandise now, t-shirts, and a card case. Because they haven't reaped enough money from this project as is. And it's the foiled frost mint deck. I don't know what color the foil is going to be. Or if there's even some pictures of what that is supposed to look like. But that was unlocked the day after my birthday, July 11th. And unfortunately, I didn't really get any gifts from anyone for my birthday. Uh, as far as playing cards and viewers and whatnot, YouTube friends. But uh, not the end of the world. Not that I was asking for anything or looking for anything. And it's kind of hard to, to get a deck of cards for the guy who's got like everything playing card related. Uh, 3,500 max will be produced, limited to one per backer. However, if backers are pledging more than one time, they're going to cheat and get those decks. And there will be people doing that. Um... But 26 bucks is a bit expensive, especially when you look at the regalia. The regalia, I just got the white regalia from Sin Lim. It just arrived today. And it cost me about 30 bucks US. That includes shipping. 26, and it was a pretty expensive shipping. It was like 15 bucks or whatever. But 26 bucks for one deck seems like a bit of a cash grab, <laughs> in my opinion. But anyways, um, they're obviously blowing up ridiculously. Pizza Playing Cards by Passion Team, Passion Playing Cards, has relaunched today. It's 45% funded. 
29 days to go. It struggled last time. And this time, in my opinion, it's got a, a worse back design. Basically, it's the same faces. It's, it's a fun deck. It's colorful. It's popping. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. I do like it. It's something I might pick up later on. Or maybe it'll be gifted to me. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, each suit represents a different type of pizza, obviously. But this is the new back design. It features a big tested woman and a chef cooking up and serving pizzas. And some other details, an oven. And kind of like a tablecloth pattern. It, it's okay. Personally, the previous back designs that they had for the two decks, it's just one this time. They're going to be printed by Legends point cards as well this time. I don't recall what the original printer was, if it was Legends. might have been. But, um, basically, the original back designs was just more like pizza toppings and pizza dough. Basically, it just looked like a pizza. It was more writer back like and I kind of preferred it. This just looks like you got court cards on faces, in my opinion. Uh, but nice number of cards. It's one you know I may check out later on. And this is pretty cool. A pizza box that comes with four decks in it. That's pretty nice. Moving on, we got the Cubic Point cards by Suffeld, which I think we looked at. It is funded, 13 days to go. Very one-way back design. Yeah. Kingdom Playing Cards for LEGO fans by NC Playing Cards is barely funded. 16%, 25 days to go, a 4,000 year old goal. It's an interesting deck from what I've seen. However, I have to question whether or not LEGO would approve this deck because it uses LEGO figures. They claim there's other projects that are similar out there and that there's no copyright issue, but I would probably beg to differ. The back design is a horrible one-way back design. It says Kingdom, and it's got some guys on there. Why would you make that the back design? It just it seems horrible. They haven't even designed the Jokers yet. And we're not seeing much in terms of artwork. Okay, never mind. There's the faces. They're pretty nice. Bit of a dirty, weathered look. Interesting aces. Hmm... Oh, there's the Ace of Spades. I was wondering what it was. I mean, and it's nice. It kind of looks like a book, the tough case. But the bad design leaves a lot to be desired. That's why it's not funding or not being better. It just suddenly get darker. I just seem to have disappeared. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Flamingo Playing Cards by Omar Renfro. This is a relaunch. It is 8% funded, 30 days to go. He launched this way back when, initially. He thinks it's going to be the next, you know, Fontaine playing cards or whatever. Not at this rate. <laughs> $8,000, I don't know when it relaunched, but this is the back design. It's fun, it's colorful. Um, they, he did modify the faces, they're not just standard core cards, but they're standard enough. Nice colorful number cards. So I do like those improvements. I like the Ace of Spades. Although it has a bit of a B uh, look to it, B Ace of Spades look to it. The Jokers. Uh, any number of cards. Though I would say, you know, if you're going to make the one Joker pink, which is a suit color of the Hearts and the Diamonds, why not make the other one match the suit color of the Spades and Clubs? It's just a little nitpicky thing. Also, it looks like they should get some pips on the score cards. It looks like they're missing something. Um, and yeah, it's a classic B Ace of Spades homage, which is fine. Printed by USB-C, 2500. It's a fun deck. <clears throat> he previously tried this before. When was it? It's the same back design, minor differences. It was... It had a much bigger goal. He did get... $6,300 and a $13,000 goal back in 2014. So it's been four years since he initially tried this. And in those four years, he's modified the court cards, improved the Ace of Spades, and that's about it. And customized the faces basically entirely. 
So it's taking him that long to do all that. Of course, his previous deck was the Red Stripe, which failed to fund. 26% funded. It was even worse, because it's just not great. However, Art of Play decided to produce that one anyway. Um, and I'm still not a fan of it. Didn't get it. This one, I am a fan. I like the improvements. However, it is struggling big time. When did it launch? Did it just launch? It just launched today, so it could still has a chance of funding and getting there. Early on, it must have just launched very recently. Next, we got the Project Shuttle Point Guard by Project Shuffle. It is 92% funded, 13 days to go. Not a big fan of that one, personally. The Secret Mini EDC Point Guards by NBA is 51% funded, 9 days to go. was not a fan of that one either. Halloween Deck by Swamp Decks is currently funded, 5 days to go. They actually funded this time around in the relaunch, which is great. Graveyard, <clears throat> super creepy and detailed deck of cards by Musketon, has funded with three days to go. Uh, <clears throat> oh good, a game based on fake news. There's no such thing as fake news. There's either actual news or there's bad news. <laughs> there, there, there's even stuff that's real news or there's stuff that's just not true. <laughs> well, I guess that would be fake. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to look at positively, I guess. Anyways, um, let's see what else there is. Deck Buddy. Aha. That's not for the actual point guards. Strangeling Girls Volume 1 Limited Edition by House of Hearts. So is a deck of cards. That's a horrible bad design. It just says Strangeling Girls. And the faces, I think there's indexes in there somewhere, but they're hard to make out from this distance. It is funded. They had a $99 goal. If you only need $90 to produce a deck, why is it on Kickstarter in the first place? If you can't afford $100, get a job. <laughs> in my opinion, it's just it's ridiculous. Um, is this even an actual deck of cards, though? It is. There you go. There's the index. Let's not look at that. <laughs> um, I don't think my covering it actually did anything. You still saw it. But, yeah, that's a... It's very sexy women. Lots of nudity Sexuality. Goody. Looks like it's the same woman throughout. In the looks of it. Um. Yeah. Just not my cup of tea. Not that I have anything against that. I just don't want to see that on my playing cards. <laughs> uh. But apparently a few people do. A whole. I don't know how many backers. But it's got 68 hours to go. It's barely funded really. Lodge Traveling Carnival Point Guard by Terry Doll is 47% fun. 22 days to go. I think that was a relaunch. Still not doing so good. And there's a Tarot deck by Bobby Alexander, which is 73% fun at 10 days to go. Didn't ask your point guards by Khalid. King Tarot is 6% fun at 5 days to go. Not looking good at this rate. It's not going to make it. I think we've looked at that before. Impeach Trump deck of cards. I'm all for that, but apparently nobody else is. Zero percent funded, five days to go. It's just way too high of a goal for a deck that is. I I really don't want to spend my money on that. <laughs> um, Art of Cardistry for Citizen Card Crack and Playing Cards by Dylan Prescott is well funded, sixty one hours to go because it had a five hundred dollar goal. <clears throat> Um, yeah, not a fan of it, personally, I'm not a fan of those court cards, I don't know what they are exactly. Interesting number cards and pips and font style, interesting back design with a Kraken, obviously. Everything is, deals with a Kraken, basically. <clears throat> they are... Being produced by NBC again. Despite the fact that there's been some backers that have had concerns about the quality. And he could perhaps do better if he had better quality. As far as funding is concerned. But health it. 
Actually, he's doing pretty good, I suppose. Futurama Series X point guards by Bruh. <laughs> uh, 47% for the nine days to go. I don't see it happening at this rate. Um, <clears throat> I think it's interesting that the cards have the suit colors on the faces as opposed to the pips and indexes, which are kind of gold colored. Uh, however, it's Futara. Did I say Futurama? <laughs> it's Futara. The back design is absolutely horrible. I got no way to say that whatsoever. One way, it's just not really good for anything. And in the faces, they really just don't interest me. And again, they have... They've identified on the one side here what A the value is. They've highlighted the A between the K and the 2. It's completely unnecessary. They actually spell out ace on the opposite corners of the index. And on the other side, it tells you the suit in hearts. So it's kind of typographic. Just not a fan of it. This, what is this? Is this supposed to indicate the value 10? But it doesn't tell you the suit, so it's, I don't know. There's just unnecessary, unnecessary information. You don't need to tell us it's a 10. You don't need to tell us what the suit is. And you don't need to tell us... Certainly don't need to tell us that it goes between the 9 and the jack. It's just ridiculous. I'm going to be printed by USB-C. Not a fan of it. I don't think it's going to fund. But you never know. Then we got King's Wild Tigers Point Cards by Jackson Robinson. Apparently it's the Kickstarter staff pick. Uh, it is well funded. 14 days to go. Don't know why people are still backing Jackson Robinson projects. Uh, but I'm not, personally. This is his inspiration, which is fine. And, I mean, nothing personal against the deck. It looks pretty cool. Stamp type seal. Lots of images here. Where are the faces? There you go. The faces are tigers. That looks absolutely Garbage, in my opinion. It looks like those tiger faces were copied and pasted onto a more traditional court card. And they're actually vintage-style court cards with the full body. But those faces just seem really out of place. That really does not interest me at all. Uh, the aces got a little bit extra stuff on there that they don't need. Like, they don't need to tell us what it is. We're not stupid. Um... The back design is an interesting full bleed pattern, but of course it has nothing to do with tigers. And the jokers and the ace of spades, they still have not even designed apparently. The back design, and actually it's weird, you see the back design there is that, casino style, but you look at the back of the box, it's got a different design that could also be a back design, and actually front was the back design. Actually, don't wait, this is the standard edition, which has a different back design, it's got standard artwork on the court cards. Not even Jackson Robinson court cards. This is just like standard expert point guard company court cards. And a bat design with a tiger head on it. The ace of spades is not that great. I mean, if I was going to get this one, I'll wait for it to go on Conjuring Arts because I know they're going to sell it at some point in time or someone else is going to sell it. But uh, I'm just not he's a huge fan. And apparently there's a different shipping rate for Russia and Australia now. It costs more money. For the deck to ship to Russia and Australia, apparently. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of this one uh, to put together. And of course, the text for Point Card Company. Why not, you know, use USB-C for a change? Next, we got Snowman Factory Point Cards by Magic Square X Bookable. It is funded, four days to go, well funded. It's got a very interesting tuck box, as you can see, with like gears on it. Actual gears, apparently. As you can see. Which is pretty interesting, pretty unique. The back design isn't bad, it's pretty unique. And the faces, they're blue and blue. <laughs> uh, why not? The court cards, however, not my cup of tea necessarily. They're okay. It's something I might get eventually. They are snowmen, basically. Um, 
kind of a fun deck. I just don't know if it's really my cup of tea. The Ace of Spades isn't bad. The Jokers are uh, something. <laughs> Not sure what that is. That's supposed to be Santa. It's an interesting deck, especially for the summertime. <laughs> um, Angels of Burden, custom point cards by Galu Design, is 6% fun at 18 days to go. Don't think it's going to happen, but let's have a look anyways. Today, um, wow. Yeah, it is not going to happen. They're at $946 out of a $15,000 goal. I don't see it happening. Interesting tough case. Um, oh, this is the one I looked at before. These guys are inspired by Fury 11. So much so that if you look at the side of the top case, the sword here, they're not even showing it to you anymore. They removed that, but the side of the top case, you can maybe make it out a little bit here. It looks like the side of the top case on a Fury 11 deck. That's not inspiration, that's copying. And I don't condone that, and I don't think it should be supported. And then everything else, this is, just doesn't feel too great. The back design kind of looks like something that might come off a of Fear 11 deck. The faces look like they leave a little bit to be desired. Stellar Point Cards by Cardinate is well funded, three days to go. It looks like one of the decks that Illusionist is actually putting out, oddly enough. Mardi Gras Masquerade Edition Point Cards by Brain Vessel Creative is 68% funded, six days to go. Let's get out there and get that one funded. The Tuvian Classic Deck by Brody Stotts is 19% funded, 27 days to go. Oh good, another cardistry deck. <sighs> um, let's have a look at this though. The back design is actually not too bad. It's pretty interesting. It's got the Vitruvian guy on there, which is from Leonardo da Vinci. It's inspired by that, obviously. That guy right there, the Vitruvian man. However, the faces are completely standard. <coughs> Excuse me. With some minor changes to the court cards, like the Suicide King has a paintbrush instead of a sword. Uh, the Ace of Spades, not very exciting. And then, it looks like it's uh, Leonardo da Vinci on the Jokers, I would say. Court cards, everything is just basically standard. Is a little bit to be desired, in my opinion. What is the price? Ten bucks on the early bird, which is still available. Aha! Which is not really a good sign, in my opinion. Printed by USPC, I do believe. Moving on, we got the Izzo playing cards by Felix Ha. Seventy percent funded. Sixteen days to go. We haven't looked at this one yet. We're almost done. Almost done with Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. What is this? This is the back design. I've seen other Izzy playing cards in the past. No idea if it's the same guy. I don't think so. It's slowly getting there. Faces. Not a fan of that whatsoever. Um, the Joker. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of these faces whatsoever. Don't think it's very usable. The back design is colorful. That's about it. I'm just not a fan. Will people please stop doing this for suits? It's just not attractive or appealing. <laughs> um, and also, what's with these colors? Like, they have the same color. Like, is this? That's a spade. It's an upside down heart. There's a the heart. Both of these look like the clubs, but they got a different color on the lettering. Aha, there's a diamond. So basically, they have a different color for each court card and ace. That's just weird. Not a fan at all of this one, I would have to say. Ruby playing cards by JTrix is 5% for it, 6 days to go. It gonna happen. Diamond playing cards number 8. Bright Summer Day by Diamond playing cards is funded 9 days to go. Eh, it's okay, but it looks like half a dozen other cardistry decks, at the very least. Maybe a dozen. Pride of Peacocks by Arcadia is 35% funded, 16 days to go. I don't think it's going to happen either. <sighs> that is a lot going on in Kickstarter. 
Glad we got through that. Um, one more little note um, I'll try to find in my email. If I can find it. Um, uh -uh -uh. There it is. Joker and the Thief. They have, they are going to be reproducing their original Joker and Thief cards in the red, white, and blue. It's coming Friday, August the 3rd, 6 p.m. Pacific time, I believe it is, to Kickstarter, so keep that in mind. That is it for Kickstarter this week. It's a bit of a day late, but comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for everything else going on in the Wolf Cards, hopefully. Hello everyone, Vita Zay Fritzy back here. You know, so what's on deck? Let's get on with it. There's quite a bit to talk about here. Some good, some bad, some downright ugly. First of all, oh, let's see if there's anything in Murphy's Magic actually. I forgot. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, there's this. Tally Home Aida Platinum Frame Yellow Point Cards. Ah, uh, for made in this past month for his 30th anniversary. Available on uh, eBay. It's at 29 bucks right now in the bidding. Pretty nice yellow color. I love Tally Ho's special circle backs. I'd love to get to some of my collection. Not a huge fan of the Aces. They're kind of weird. <laughs> and the Jokers for that matter. But I would still love to get it. If anyone is able to get this one or some of his previous stacks for a trade, I'm interested. Let me know. Moving on, Gemini Pine Cards has released his Superfire Spitfire. It's actually sold out, I believe. 15 bucks for this. Are you out of your freaking mind? I would not pay 10 bucks for that. Uh, the court cards are just recolored standard court cards. They've modified the pip, apparently. I do like the colors that they use on the hearts and diamonds. But the back design just leaves a bit to be desired with me. Overall, the whole thing, not for that price. At first, 10 bucks, maybe. 15 bucks, no. Speaking of not so great, these are coming soon from Riffle Suffle, the Serious B, which, eh, is a bit to be desired. I do not like those court cards. It just is weird. This one, the Neon Line, which I saw, I did get an invite to pick it up, I didn't. However, it looks like, you know, many other card three decks to some extent. I don't like these recolored. Middle finger jokers. I don't know how you usually see a lot of that to be produced. They're usually pretty big on obscenities like that. <laughs> um, not a fan of that artwork. And in between lines, which is just not even good in my opinion whatsoever. What the hell happened to that? His head has been cut off. It just it looks horrible. It looks incomplete. Just not interesting whatsoever. Uh, next up, some of you pointed this out. World Poker Tour, WPT World Poker Tour is now using Faded Spade playing cards. It's actually a video review. And they're pretty interesting. They're different than the standard USB-C court cards and artwork. Something I might check out. Uh, I'll show you the back design right there. They got basic red and black set, but they're also have a WPT branded blue and red set. So I'm definitely interested in checking those out. They're pretty unique looking. Um, then there's this on Indiegogo, the Bicycle Magic Deck. It is 6% funded, two days left. Not a chance in hell. It's by Prestige Point Cards. It's just not going to happen. Maybe if it was on Kickstarter, it might have a chance. But Indiegogo is basically indie no go when it comes to Point Cards. It's an interesting looking deck. Um, are they going to show us more of the back design? I'm curious. Interesting look on the tuck case. Uh, that's the back design. It looks like it's just way too thick on the borders in yellow. The rest is interesting looking. Um, 
but yeah, it's just, it's not going to happen. Speaking of bad, I mean, that's not bad, but let's look at bad. These were just basically sold out by anyone worldwide.com. They're basically souvenir decks, and I saw, I believe they're for sale for, yes, 24 bucks. Oh, wait, that's an 8-pack, so that's not horrible, I suppose, if that's what it is. But still, basically a souvenir deck for that. Put the buy, I guess, it's, wait. Is it say who put to them? Super slippery souvenir playing cards. Made in USA. 400 sets available. <sighs> just not a fan. They're apparently sold out. They also got these checkerboard cards, which are just horrible. I should produce these cards. I could do these cards and make some money. I mean, it's just copy and paste of flakes. I mean, soon. The Canadian flake playing cards, for anyone who's interested. <laughs> Um, Art of Play has, I think I mentioned the Ferdman Records deck before. A couple more to mention now. I mentioned the Flying Dog 125 bucks, jeez. Um, 15 bucks for these decks. The first one is the Art and Machine playing cards by Ryan Hewitt, designed by him. Focuses on four moments in art history. Okay. And basically, that's what you get on the faces. They're not very playable or usable, in my opinion. Just all sorts of art type things on them. The back design, that's the back design. Basically, an X. Right. <laughs> uh. Definitely not my cup of tea, especially for that price point. And then off the wall playing cards. It's by by 80s Surf and Skate Culture in California. And it's colorful. <laughs> um, this one I actually don't mind so much. I mind the price point a little bit. The court cards, they look repetitive. Let me look at them right there. At least in each suit. Kind of weird looking. Uh, the back design is very colorful. It's sunglasses, I guess, is what it is. And it's a, yeah, it's very colorful and neon-y. Borderless design, so it should be nice for fanning and forcing. I don't know if I'll pick it up at that price point, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, also, Sin Lim released a little while back. I don't know if I mentioned it previously the last time I did this video, but the white regalia, which I just got in the mail today. I don't know if you can see that. Beautiful. Shiny foil. Including the cards, which I'll get to in a review. And that's going to be it for today. I don't think there's anything else really to talk about. Not really. So comment, rate, subscribe. I'm going to cut it short, unfortunately. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.